Hey there, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu. Today we're going to talk about business tips for thirsty hustlers. Now when I say hustler, uh, thirsty hustlers, this is coming from a conversation I was having last night. Someone I know who makes a lot of money is getting beat upside the head with taxes, right? This is a Facebook thing. So I go in and I make a few recommendations, but I've learned that it is best to get into the core details or go deep with uh, the information on the main thread. So what I did was I sent the person a private message where I outlined more, gave links and all this other stuff. Very appreciative. We ended up having a very nice conversation. Then some people came in and put some other posts that was not hustler porn, you know, building a business to sell is a proven strategy for getting rich. So it's not a bad thing, but it's just not my thing. And everything's predicated on the flip. It's predicated on getting rich really fast. It's predicated on a lot of stuff that I just fundamentally don't believe in. So I was just looking at the conversations and then, you know, people started chiming in. Now, they don't know, dude and I already had this very good conversation where, you know, they were putting stuff in there and already knew the answers. And he was going in and I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. No, I'm not going to do this. And I'm just sitting there like, everybody doesn't want to build a business to flip. And this is one of the business tips. Most people and a great deal of this advice out here is predicated on quick flips, um, getting in and out of the business. It's not durable business advice. That's why I said, you know, this is business tips for thirsty hustlers because people are so damn thirsty to become rich because this is uh, another thing that I noticed. It, it fits into this whole uh, storyline. All right. Um, this is guy. He's an uh, internet marketer and part of his copy is he makes all of this money, right? Yeah. I noticed this this summer or something like this, and he had to have a GoFundMe for his dog. You know, it's just two Gs. I'm like, wait a minute, you're making all this money and you got a GoFundMe page for two Gs? Why don't you have a credit card with that on there? Why don't you have that in the savings, right? So typically, a lot of information that is coming out there is very tertiary. It's very, very now, but this isn't the type of stuff that's going to get you to being well off most of your life. This whole thing with, you know, there's a common question. What if you lost it all? Could you build it all again? How does one lose it all? Um, policies, there are instru financial instruments that you would never lose it all. So how would you lose it? Then I, then I begin to really start thinking, people can only speak from a position of where they are and what they know, right? can't overspeak your knowledge. You can't overspeak your intelligence. You can't overspeak your native uh, and uh, knowledge base. You just can't. Uh, I'm going to jump on this. Do you think a thrift store is a good idea or a waste of time? Depends. If you're building this thrift store just for quick money, yeah, it's a waste of time. Are you building this thrift store because you want to serve a charity? You like old stuff. You like helping people out. You know, it really depends. The, the bison stuff is up. What's up, Benjamin? Yeah, the uh, business tips for thirsty hustlers. Most of this thirst and is predicated on many people are fucking broke. And uh, when I say broke, you could be making 100 G's and be broke because you have no assets. You have high income in 100 G's. But you don't have any assets. You don't have things that make money when you sleep. You don't have it's just a lot of stuff is missing. But this is why so many people are thirsty. What creates thirst? The lack of water, right? That's what creates thirst. So if you have plenty of water, if there if there's always liquid in your cup, right? You're not thirsty. So when someone is really thirsty. It is a resource. First, it's a mental resource. And second, it is a physical resource lack. This is something lacking because when I put out advice, and sometimes I have to forget that most people don't have my orientation of what I like to call perpetual companies, building stuff that can last a long time. I mean, the whole plan was with the upscale garage sale 
I had a whole plan mapped out, and it's just physically we just couldn't do it. I mean, it's just kind of weird for both of us to get sick around the same time. If only one of us had gotten sick, things would have went on. That was something that I wanted because I've just have been in an environment where I've seen people who were, quote, retired but had a business that was running. And this is just not something that many people talk about because the whole natural order of things is get a job, work 40, 50 years of your life, then retire. Or start a business, flip it and sell it, then retire. What about creating something where you're living the kind of life that you want to live right now? I mean, I, I don't really hear a lot of that stuff grounded in reality, which is very possible. Because I was having this conversation because we're, we're trying to flesh out where to take this business. And many people have never, you know, it's like, so what do you like? What, what are your hobbies? What do you really, really love to do? What could you do all fucking day long? And, you know, usually it's games or something like that. But typically, unless you're making the games, you're not going to make any money. You're just not. So with the business tips, and my first tip to you is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quantify this with age ranges. If you're 25 and under, get as much life experience as you can. Because at 25 and under, you may not know what you want to do. You haven't lived long enough. You may not have grown up in a family where you're exposed to certain things. You just, it is what it is. Get out, move, take trips, go around the world, do all that stuff. The legacies that we inherit from our parents and environments can literally be the lives that we create around something that we inherited without examination of, is that a good thing for me or... Is it a good thing for some? Is it really good for me? And, you know, once again, this is not good or bad, but where I'm going with this is if you don't get that exposure, there's a lot of things that you just can miss out on life. And if you don't grow up in a parental a family situation where there's, a, you know, a lot of enterprising people in your family, uh, business owners, uh, upper income owners who can say, hey, this is how you do this little Johnny and this is how you do this little, you know, uh, Jelena. You don't have that. You have to create those experiences for yourself through meeting people, traveling and taking chances. So 25 and under. Take as many chances as you can. Um, start a business, start a business and fail. Do all this stuff because typically what's going to happen? And I'm seeing this. Uh, people will build a business and they'll be, become successful but it doesn't resonate with their inner heart and they'll start fucking it up or they'll start doing drugs or they'll start doing all kinds of crazy shit. I've seen this close up close and personal. And it's very, very ugly. Now, this is tips for thirsty hustlers. Why are you thirsty? Ask yourself, why don't I have any money? And then, this isn't a conversation you have to have anyone, but ask yourself, why don't I have any money? What's, what is, what's going wrong? Why can't I make money? Um, What's the issue? And I want to give you a hint. Money does not, you can't get money for the sake of getting money. Like, uh, where is it? In one of my drives, I got tons of these things, right? Sucker was like 140 bucks, I think. Something like that. I forget how many gigs I have to look, but that's not the point. I didn't buy that just to give them money. I bought it because it serves a purpose for me. So what's your service? Do you even serve anybody? Do you want to serve anybody? The people who serve the most people make the most money. That's what you got to do. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, broke down old chick. That's hilarious. Black Friday. How do I use this gym, Instagram for networking? Okay, here's networking one-on-one. Find some people that you want to get to know, right? And stalk them. Find their Facebook page. Find their LinkedIn. And learn as much as you can about them. And then watch what they do. And then when you see like... Uh, well, how this thing started off. Uh, I think this dude and I are going to become really good friends because we think very much alike. But he's not going to forget that he put out a question and I over-delivered. 
I over delivered. So find someone that you want to get to know and find some need that they have and over deliver. And your networking will be real easy. If you go into the door like, hey, excuse me, could you give me something? You don't even know me. Your networking will be very, very hard. Purpose pit advice for home organization businesses. We want to do corporate and home gigs. Right now, it's a two-woman gig. We're afraid of our safety, though, but willing to take the risk for uh What do you mean, afraid for your safety? Expand on that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, closets. I hadn't heard of you know, the home closet murderer. I don't know. Break that down. Excuse me. Can I make money in the niche market writing? Okay, let's expand that. When you're a writer, writer for a romance or a business book writer or a fitness book writer, you're writing in the niche and you're making money. You can make a lot of money writing in the niche. Felix Gonzalez, I'm building a service business and I pit all... What, Felix? Um... I think I don't know. I don't know where you go with that. That's that's yeah. Put, rewrite that. I mean, that's that's kind of throwing me. Collapse. How to take business to the next level? I'm doing pretty great solo, but there's only so much I can do individually. How do I recruit people, leverage them, expand the business? They're called employees, man. Hire people. Hire people to train them. <laughs> you make it sound like recruit, like you're the CIA and shit. <laughs> Just, it's called hiring employees, man. <laughs> All right, you gotta hire people, man. But thanks, I appreciate that. That 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 made my tickle bone waggle real hard. Uh, purpose said, going to people's home that we do not know. There can be a risk for assault. I hope we're wrong, though. We're willing to take. Okay, uh, purpose fit. Okay, home organization. Who's going to be hiring you? Mostly women. Mostly women. That there. All right, uh, Craigslist. I never had an issue with getting robbed for furniture or threading or anything. There are just certain things that lends itself to bullshit. Uh, home organization, think about the person who needs their shit organized. This is a conscientious person. This is a busy person. This is a person with uh, disposable income. I don't think you're going to have problems there. Uh, William Celeste, yes, give me, give me, gets you blocked. I always hate getting added to groups. Chris W, find the network of people who inspire you or who, where you like to be. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Uh, Ronnie, how can I change my mindset to start your own thing when you have a family support with a good job? I'm a scary little bitch. Okay, let's address Ronnie. And here's the fundamental truth. Ronnie may never ever start a business. And it's not because Ronnie doesn't have a desire. It's not because Ronnie's not smart enough. Ronnie said key words, married with kids. To my young people out here, and we're going to use Ronnie because I keep telling people to do this and folks want to wife up and fam up because they're lonely and don't have the strength to tough it out alone like an adult. All my young dudes out there and young ladies, you don't have kids. This is your time to fucking grind and shine. Many people mistakenly think that having a family, having kids make you work harder. No, it is social shame that makes you work harder. What kind of sorry, sorry sad piece of shit are you got a family you're not out there doing? That's what makes people work. People who are driven don't need to have a family. Uh, there's this old saying, behind every successful man is a woman. Um, Michael Geffen, gay guy. There was no woman behind him. Billionaire. I mean, it, it's... We have these social narratives that bring people into a position where they're not going to be successful because you're believing in bullshit. So once you get a family, your dreams, fuck your dreams. Once you get a family, fuck what you want to do. To be socially accepted in this country and shit, the world, you got to go out there and take care of fam. And if you ain't doing that, you ain't nothing but a piece of shit. So the best thing to do is to avoid that until you are truly ready. And I don't know if you're ready or not running, but typically when I meet people who want to do businesses and they've got, you know, what I call the three deadly sins, uh, bad credit, 
married and with kids. <laughs> I know that's going to sound fucked up, but typically you're like trying to take off, but you got weights strapped around your neck and it's, it's just hard. I mean, yeah, you'll hear the story of the single mother with 18 kids and she starts a cosmetic line, but hey, no one says anything about that pimp she was fucking, but hey, you know, that's just me. <laughs> So um, with the mindset for running, mindset comes from desire. You got to find something that you would die for. I'm going to say die for. I'm not going to say kill for because people would misconstrue that. But you got to find something you would die for to start living for, if that makes sense. You, you never know, man. These are Trump years. CIA, CIA could be here. Uh, King Flip, your rich folks just going to record you organizing for later on, they won't touch you. Uh, Miss Mstack, best membership plug from WordPress. Uh, Glendon paid ones. I don't know. Um, I have moved away from the assembling of WordPress sites and plugins. And see, for every plugin you put in, you run the chance of slowing down your website. And if you don't optimize your Word, you know this should be the first thing you should do for your WordPress site. Optimize for mobile, first thing. Second thing, you should make suck, sure that the sucker loads fast, and then everything else after that. Um, Blue Oregon, bad life choices. Yeah, you could stay broke so much longer than when you're by yourself. I mean, that whole thing, it's just, it becomes hard, man. Uh, Felix, my son wants to go to college and play basketball with no idea what major he wants to. Uh, um, I'm building a service business that's projected to make any 120. Any advice on to get him on board? Oh, sure. Kick his ass out. He put him in college and kick him out and like, hey, you, you want to do your own thing? You pay your own bills. I mean, it's amazing how quick that makes people grow up. As long as you enable his dreams, he's going to ignore yours. Uh, William, yeah, I walked away from those social narratives when I was 40. <laughs> Renika, Buck Renika Butler, is a loan a bad idea? No. If you get a, bon a, a loan to start your business, I believe in loans. I believe in credit cards. There are many people who don't. Cash and carry, you can only go so far. <laughs> Fuck acceptance. <laughs> we got on a real one for William. Um, uh, Kalani, even having a serious girlfriend hurts your hustle in your wallet, believe me. No. Having the wrong girlfriend for you. All right, this was a conversation that I have. I'm an entrepreneur. I work a lot. Do you understand what that means? You got to have the, if, if, if you're doing, if you, you got to be married to your business before you meet that girl. And she's just got to know where she fits in and she doesn't fit in. I mean, you got to get that stuff established. You have to be able to say, look, uh, I've had this conversation before. Uh, I was getting that. We don't spend a lot of time together. And I said, you know what? You are 100% correct. And I feel that this is unfair. So at this moment, I'm breaking up with you and we can be the best of friends. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, don't go getting crazy. Gee, what are you talking about? I was like, look, you're unhappy, right? Well, no. I'm like, you just said, we, I'm like, I, I already told you. I'm married to my business. And, you know, you are the second priority after that. But that's what it is. If you can't deal, I totally understand that. I appreciate that. I think you're a beautiful person. And, you know, if that's what you need, we need to break up. If you can't, oh, I can deal. Start having those conversations like that and mean it. Don't be like, you know, selling wolf tickets. and No, be mean that shit with authority. And I guarantee you, I've had that conversation with a few. And each one was like, no problem. I won't bring it up again. When you're like, okay, bye. That solves a lot of that shit. So you got to pick the right girl. That's what you got to do on that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Ty Lopez because the thing is, for everyone to do what Ty Lopez has done, you need to go out and start about six, seven businesses, fail, make a few million, take a, and then spend about you know 15 million on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, and Facebook ads. You can't copy his business model because you don't have his money. Everyone is like, I mean, you know, people have been saying all of this stuff about him and stuff, but how many people have 16, 15, 20 million to throw in the ads? That money had to come from somewhere. 
Go back, study Ty's early businesses, and you'll get a better appreciation of the dude. Like I said, a lot of people hate him. I don't hate him. Uh, I'm not a fan, but I, I can appreciate excellence. I can appreciate smart marketing, and he's doing it. <laughs> at least keep it real with him. <laughs> Ty is mad connected. Uh, Purpose Pit, doing your 30 days, 2,500. Yesterday, I wrote thank you notes to my customers this year. Getting rid of the emotional baggage. Same day, got new customers out the blue. Yeah. And there it is. You know, and people like think the course is weird. A lot of the reasons that you can't be successful is you got a lot of uh, false narratives in your head. There's a lot of bullshit. Um, you know, I, I've, had, I've been guilty of this stuff too. Like, I didn't do shit on the weekends. You know, I just had data that suggested that i didn't get as many views which is true but i went out and did something a weekend a few years ago and i made like 10 g's and i was like damn bad glinded bad glinded you know <laughs> it's just what you believe is will become true what up glinded if you're really thirsty you have to will yourself when the motivation has dwindled and pushed even push even harder yeah i mean Thirst, it creates lack, and lack creates desperation, and desperation creates very bad choices. I've checked out. Can you explain when someone is torn between what kind of business to start? Is it do what you're good at or do what makes you money? Both. You don't have to do one. I, my thing is, whatever skill set that you have that can make you money, do it. This and the stuff like... I hate what I do and I'm going to go out and learn all this other stuff. Works for some people, doesn't work for most people. You got to get started. The first thing is to get started. Ride share. Nobody asked me for money because they don't know I have it. I live a very simple life. Yeah, what you believe is it. Um, part of the thing, I mean, look, I'm in a hoodie right now. When I went out to do some errands this morning, I look like a regular dude. Um, I got a friend who I know owns about $10 million of real estate. Every time I see him, he's in a t-shirt, jeans, and flip-flops. He's got an older BMW. That's the only hint. You know, and every you know, it's just comfortable. If you uh, like being in a suit every day, if you want to buy a Rolex and that's how you organically flow, do it. I mean, be you. I don't really worry about, and also, uh, I feel fortunate. Most of my friends are pretty damn well off. So I guess that's another reason. When your circle changes, and you get more business owners, real business owners, not want to be business owners, not people pretending to be business owners, not people like, hi, today my name is Carl and I play a millionaire. You know, folks who really are doing it, they don't ask you for money because they got it. <laughs> just don't do it. You don't, I just don't run it. I don't really run into the problems. Uh, Life Warrior, I have an affiliate website that sells men's designer clothes. I cannot structure my website to start making disruptive income. Uh, number one, you got to get traffic to your website. I don't know you know, this affiliate thing. I don't know how that works. There's a lot of missing pieces in that question. Collabs, I like your mindset, your videos, because you talk about having a good mindset. Most beginners don't pay attention to this. But with experiences, they're having the right mindset that's more important. Thanks, Glennon. I appreciate the kudos, man. This is the thing with the mindset. Like, okay, let's kind of go back up here. Because th this is why I do these. Because I'm finding out I get a lot of information from you guys. And I really appreciate that. Purpose Pit. Doing 30 days, 2,500. Yesterday, wrote thank you notes to my customers this year. Getting rid of promotional baggage. Same day, got new customers out the blue. You got the juice, Glennon. Okay, here's how that works. Your mind has compartments, right? And this is why a lot of people are poor. And I'm not trying to beat up on poor people. I'm not going to, you know, this is the thing. When you're poor, and I speak from a person who used to be fucking poor, your whole existence is predicated on survival. Your whole thought process is predicated on survival. It is not predicated on thriving. 
is not predicated on doing for others. It's not predicated. You are trying to pay the fucking rent. You're trying to put some food on the table. You're trying to keep your kids in clothes. That is your predominant thought. You think about it at night. You think about it at morning. You think about it when you're going to work. That's all you think about, and that's all you become. When you change your mindset, like this is why you have to be grateful for a lot of stuff because when, you know, it's like uh, this morning I had like a really small PayPal payment and some other stuff. And I was like, I'm grateful for that customer. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for this. And boom, a bigger PayPal payment came in like two hours later. When you start saying, I'm grateful for what I have, you get more. But when you walk around with, oh, fuck, my life's fucked. The man's got, I hate this job. I hate these people. My friends are fucked up, blah, 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 blah. You're bringing this shit into your life because that's all you think about. That's the signal that you send into the universe. That's all you think about. Because I can tell you some stuff that would blow your mind, but this channel would definitely get deleted if I got into that. Actually, I got a course for that. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the Mr. Bonham 86. Uh, I believe in starting multiple businesses. That's something I do. Yeah, you like suits. You like suits. Be you. Do what you like. Well, if you, this, this is my thing. Uh, many people make value judgments on Lamborghinis, uh, Porsche, certain kind of cars. So like, you'll hear people like, even if I had the money, I wouldn't do that. That is too much money for something. That is a scarcity mindset. If you got 15 mil and you blow 250 for a car, it doesn't really hurt you. <laughs> it doesn't hurt you. You make 150000 in a $250,000 car. You can't really buy it unless you put yourself in harm's way because I think the payment will be like anywhere from 1800 to three grand a month. So let's just say, let's put it at two. That's 24 Gs a year. You make 150, that's one sixth of your income plus insurance, which will be higher, plus maintenance be higher. So you could literally spend 50 Gs of your 150 on that car. It ain't like you, you wouldn't do it. You can't do it. Uh, Broderick, hey, I'm about to publish an erotica book on Kindle, stuck on whether to use pen name or real name, also working on the essay for Uncivilized Profits. Thank you for everything. Um, I suggest, this is me, there's many people when they used to be in the right group, we kind of got into it. I suggest a pen name because it gives you the option to do something later. If you use your real name and you get locked in and then one day, let's just say you get sanctified and you want to be a preacher, that shit will come back to hunt you. As long as you're a regular person with no nothing going on, eh, that's okay. But the minute you try to inspire to do something, it <laughs> it will come out. So I would say a pen name. Uh, let's see. How can I get traffic to my website? Go to the the playlist on this channel and just start watching how to start a business and stuff like that. Uh, Jen, I'm great at organizing and strategizing office, closet, and garage organizing. Do I need to get a cert or skip that? Just start advertising. Just start advertising. Just start advertising. It, it's more than a law of attraction, uh, Fajita. It's um, what you think about. Okay, it it's like this. Let's say you're talking to a girl, right? And um, fellas, if this happened to you, just put it in there. And she's cute, but you're not really interested. You know, she's cool. You're being cordial. You're just talking to her, but you're not really interested. How many times have you been talking to someone like that? And she just all of a sudden was all over you. Uh, she made sure she gave you her number. Uh, typically, it's, it's, it's signals. And it's a signal to your subconscious mind that what you think about the most because you, you have to understand how your mind works when you dream at night those dreams come from things that you do in life <clears throat> they come from things that you've done they come from hopes and dreams and stuff like this so your mind never ever shuts off so what you think about during the day i gotta pay the rent i gotta pay the rent i gotta get clothes i get it close 
that hits your subconscious mind, and your subconscious mind's like, you gotta survive. So your subconscious mind goes to survival mode and literally shuts down opportunities because, oh, you don't really want to meet this guy around this corner who can change. No, no, you just wanna survive. So essentially what you think about is creating your own personal dynamic. CJ Lee, people overthink too much. I will uh, wholeheartedly agree. It's fear. It's definitely fear. Uh, Rasha, do you try to pull other people with you or did you just focus on your own success? <laughs> Let me tell you what happened when I tried to pull people with me in 2009 on YouTube. I was accused of trying to get over on people. I was um, talked about. I was ignored. I was mocked. Yes, I've tried to pull people for it. But see, this is the thing. You can't move someone who is not ready to be moved. So all of this nation of we all rising together, and that's bullshit. You look at LeBron, they were all young teenagers. They were all peers. They came up together because they started from nothing together. That then you that whole pulling up people, you can't, like I say, you can't move people that want to be moved. It sounds nice, and you know many uh, prosperity preachers and uh, hustler porn people bring that up, and we're all coming up together. But the reality is, few people will make it to the top. And I'm talking about you can put a chain on their ass and hook it up to a uh, 350 Hemi, 350 Dually, and they still ain't moving. <clears throat> Gratitude is important. Yes, it is. Shalise, Jen, stay grateful. It's the best way. Shoot four five eight. Tell it. Oh, here's a good one. Someone's listening. King Flip, if I wanted to do video marketing, would it be a good idea to shoot free commercials of businesses to just show them the finished work? With? Yes. Yes. Because that shows them you're serious and actually you can do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. Great, great comment. Great comment. Uh, that's 30 days to 2,500 KK. Uh, Greg Williams, can you do a video about taxes its impact on personal business? Thank you. No. I do not do tax videos. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not doing that because this is the thing. Everyone tax situation is so fucking different. The tax situation of a man who is married with two kids, his wife works, he has a business is different than the guy who is single has his own. But it is so different. Here's my advice for those of you who really want to do the tax thing correctly. There's a person called a certified financial planner. Find yourself a certified financial planner, pay them the money that are not going to be cheap. And like, look, what should be my money map? Then once you start making money, get yourself a CPA and talk to your CPA, have you know regular meetings and you know talk to them. That's going to help you better than this because see, what I do right now, this is very general. This is very general advice. This is very general. You need specific targeted advice to your personal situation. And from person to person, uh, some states, some states have state income tax, some states don't. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that go into that. So I'm not gonna start doing the whole tax thing because what happens is people are looking for loopholes. And then the, the, the shit changes. You know, like uh, the guy who I advised where we got into those tax things, I know he makes seven figures a year. I know he has a wife and family. I know enough about him to really give him some good advice. And he didn't even know about the step, which told me he didn't have a CPA. No CPA who's worth his weight. They're going to bring that up. It's like, okay, retirement, you know, since you're employed, you could. So when I see people post stuff, I know what they don't know because the questions they're asking, if they had paid professional help, they wouldn't be asking these questions on Facebook. I mean, pay the money, get yourself a professional person. And also, I'm on YouTube and there's a thing called liability. Uh, I can put some stuff out and then someone can follow it or not follow it, get harmed and complain and get my channel deleted. So that's another reason. You know, you got there's certain things that you just don't really need to touch uh, on a broad basis, but you need to touch one on one. What's too funny, Broderick? <laughs> Reticulated activating system. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 some real simple stuff. 
Benjamin happens to me a lot. I don't appear thirsty to women, so they seem to appear out of nowhere. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's some weird stuff. I've checked that if I write my niche market says, no, no, all right, you, you, you're doing too many things. Forget about the publishing company. Write your first book, put it up, make some money, and then go from there. I've checked out. Oh, I'm going to say something else, too. And this is going to get real, real interesting. They did a study about email names and passwords. Now, I'm, I've never had this conversation with y'all. This kind of goes back to the mindset thing. Like, I've checked out. Okay, I know that's your screen name. And yeah, I'm picking on you, but that is not a good screen name or phrase to have in your mind, in your subconscious mind. They did this study. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, they were talking about passwords and stuff were uh, very much indicative of what people thought of themselves. So if you've got like a really fucked up password, that's what you think of yourself. And every time you go online or whatever, you're typing that shit in. So not only are you mentally thinking it, you've put it into your muscles. You've put the fucked up mindset in your muscles. I'm telling you, so I've checked out. You need to change that. I know it's going, I know you're thinking, all right, what does it matter? It's kind of like the person, and everyone knows this person who always says, who's always self-depreciating. It's not good, man. It's not good. Uh, Jen, what's the way though? Cleaning service would want people, cleaning service people would want references. Should I discount it for the three, three to five customers to get references, then go out and hire a startup with a regular fee? Find 10 people, clean their house, get references and here are the references you need today you need their picture you need their real name and you need to make sure they're on facebook so when people see that they're like, hey testimonial they didn't go to oh this is a real person 10 people do it free then charge which one charge uh what quality separated billionaire from a millionaire audience it's the only difference who gets the bigger audience uh, Benjamin, I can really see my business scaling from changing my mindset and doing what you suggest. Do a video about rainy days or a detail, always something. Did a video about rainy days as a detail or always something to do. Yep. All right. For those of you who want to get into the, the super mindset stuff, hold on a second. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Let me go ahead and find it. Oh, scripted days. Now, this will take your mindset to a whole new level. This will, I mean, seriously, I mean, if you do the exercises, you will know this is a change in your life the first week. I mean, a, a big ass change, very big change. Let's see. Get in there. Okay. Let me find it. Now, I'm going to tell you, and I can't talk about this. On, I'll, I'm going to talk about it in Uncivilized Profits because I can't talk about it here because the shit will blow your mind for real. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. I will find it. Here we go. Um, let's see. Well, I have this price at. Let's see. Where are we? Let me get the link. Now, let me tell you about scripted days and how it changed my life. And this was an exercise that I learned. And it was just, it was an accident. So, okay, scripted days is, I'm going to reduce it uh, 150. So you're saving like 70%. This will be for live stream people only. If I hit the save button, okay. So. All right, let's see before I, let me hit what's going on. Uh, let's see. All right, sure thing, code, labs. 
purpose fit. I've seen people sell money all and sell out like crazy. Same thing with crystals. They all seem like quack science, but it sells your thoughts. It, if it works, this is really quack science. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, Greg, thanks for answering that tax question. Sure. Uh, the shoe four, five, eight, I'm 23. How do I move past the false narratives that are in my subconscious? Start replacing false narratives with real nar narratives and purpose and intent. Uh, life worth, sure, no problem. Oh, that's cheap. I just did a quote for my business with a CPA and they quoted me 140 a month. Is that a good price? That's cheap. Um, here's the thing. As a business owner, when you're messing around with tax stuff, that takes hours. You have to research because they change the shit. So 150, let's see, how much do you make per hour? Let's say your business makes a thousand dollars a day, right? Makes a thousand bucks a day. But you take a whole day every month to mess around with business with tax stuff or filing forms stuff, a whole day. So you do that, yeah, four times a month. So that's four thousand dollars. By paying that CPA, you reclaim your four grand. So you got to look at it like that. Hire people who do stuff better than you do. Okay, so let's see. We got Uberman 2010. Well, 210, what's up? Yeah, I got a lot going on. Cheatable. This ain't passive income. This is earned income. Passive income is the AdSense. Whether I do anything or not, I still get it. Passive income is the books on Amazon. Passive income is very hard to maintain and get unless it's from a large real estate portfolio or you have large uh, paper investments. I've never claimed that this is passive income. It's not. I have passive income from the AdSense and from Kindle sales and stuff that goes through Gumroad. Let's see. And, you know, for those of you who are looking for passive income, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Because for most people, they're never going to get it. And you know, I've checked out seriously. Every time you look at your username, you reinforce a negative thought perception. You probably made it as a joke, maybe self depreciating, but it will impact your psyche. Uh, Till Swan says, easy to manifest a million dollars as it is to manifest a penny. Do you believe this? Yep. I'm going to get into that in a minute. In your opinion, what's the place to get a loan? Uh, any bank that you've got credit can get a loan. So sure. Okay. For those of you who want to seriously, um, this is the stream special. For those of you who seriously want to amp up your productivity, uh, well, productivity and, and your results. This is something that I did years and years ago. I was living in the boarding house and I halfway do it right, but it still works. Um, I woke up one day and I was feeling real shitty. And you know, you have those days where if you just don't stop it, it's gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So, I sat down and I took a sheet of paper. Okay, that's crazy. I don't know why that. I took pen, paper. I did that date of the day. I wrote that date down. And I began to plan my day in the affirmative. I'm going to have a great day today. I'm going to make sales today. I was working at T-Mobile. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I just truly wrote it out and everything. And just to be funny, I am going to fuck blah, 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 because I say her name. This is real unusual, and you can actually find her on Facebook. So we'll just call her Jay, just for shits and giggles, as the Irish boys like to say, and from Boston, and went to work, and it just seemed like a person came in, oh, I'll take five lines. I'll take, it was just like crazy, and I was just went with it, and went with it, went with it. So I'm doing all this selling, talking and everything, and Jay's over there in the corner, and Jay's like, so what are you doing tonight? And I was like, not much. I was thinking about hanging out with you, right? Just being sure. She said, oh, really? Okay, because, you know, um, I'm kind of in one of those moods, and, you know, I don't want to be alone tonight and stuff. 
what the fuck? Spent the night and everything. And next day I got home, I wrote that shit again. And the thing is, you got to consistently do it because when you get you know, lazy, but I, you know, you don't get a hundred percent results. Okay. Let's be clear about that. But I went from kind of existing to having very purpose intent filled days and most of the stuff on my list happened. So that's that course. And I'll teach you the whole thing. How do you create a business to when customers call you and asking for input for automotive impairs? I've been thinking of creating a channel for this purpose with live question and answer. Um, they have these things online where you can go and talk to people. They're all set up. Essentially, you go to the website, you sign up. When someone has a question, you get a ding and you can answer it and they get paid for it. Uh, from a money gen money standpoint, that's really a high time type deal because you're trading uh, time for money. But it can be good for lead generation. It can be good for SEO. It just kind of depends on how it's set up. But typically, I don't like that business model for auto. I just don't. That's funny. I worked at T-Mobile years ago also. Yeah, it was Powertail. I was there when they went from Powertail to T-Mobile. But once again, that is scripted days live stream special knock yourselves out because typically in one of the things and this is gonna it's gonna kind of go back let me scale back because i saw it if you have to continuously post up new videos in order to increase sales could it really be considered passive income all right this is kind of more of the tips for uh thirsty hustlers you have people now here's the deal i went out and started not one but 12 businesses. I failed at five businesses. I stuck with the other ones. The reason I can sit here every day and talk for hours and hours and hours is because I have years and years and years of experience. This isn't me fucking bragging, that's just the, the way it is. And there are many people who are trying to do exactly what I'm doing, but they don't have the years and years of experience. And they're looking for tactics, they're looking for hustler porn, they're looking for, because they're thirsty as fuck, because they have a lack of skills. They have a lack of ability and they're looking for one of these internet tactics to leverage the bullshit that they have to sell out to people and it's just not going to work. So if you want to have passive income, go out and accomplish some shit. Go out and live. If you want to have passive income from an experience of your life, because you can't relate experiences of your life unless you actually have a fucking life. And there are many people out here who just, it, being a life coach at 23, what the fuck have you been through? What the fuck have you been through? And that's why a lot of this shit doesn't work because you don't have enough substance to create what you want to create. Because, um, you know, I'm going at you, Rod Sherlock, right, because you, you, you ask all of these questions because you want to do what I'm doing without doing what I've done. You got to actually put the horse in front of the cart cart horse not here's the cart and the horse back here trying to push the cart with his head go out and live because <clears throat> i get irritated and i get cranky because i give you guys all of this shit and you just got to watch the videos and then you have to fucking execute and that's the problem the execution everything works kindle works youtube works facebook works amazon works uh, there's some people who are just executing much better than others. And there's some people who are executing and there's some people who are not executing at all. So, you know, because it kind of goes into why I did this stream from the conversation about the tax thing. People are trying to get amazing benefits from bullshit effort. <laughs> I just, it just does, doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to say something that's going to probably piss off a lot of people, but um, take Trump in the election. Um, like him or not, he works his ass off. This is something that people have, I mean, I want you to think about it. If you just go ahead and Google, dude's been in movies, uh, he's had like reality shows, he's done this. He actually works his ass, he executes like a motherfucker. And that's something that is saying, like I said, you know, this isn't some endorsement, but for personally over the years that you've seen him, he actually puts in a lot of fucking work. He executes. You, you gotta, you gotta look at that. 
Let's see. Uh, I did well, and other employees hated me because I know Spanish and I became a senior rep. I hustled. That's why they made it there. People hate it when you make them look bad, man. Shoe coach, life coach of 23. No, I just want to start my first, first, my first small business. Uh, JC Sanchez, I uh, just started doing Kindle, making 60 bucks a month with four books. I know that's bad, but I'm just starting. I think that's bad. That's not bad, dude. It's not bad. All right, let's look at that. Uh, that's 700 bucks a year for some shit that you don't have to do. You did it once and you make 700 bucks a year. You get up to 30 books and let's say it's a G a month. You don't have to do shit for it once you do those first books. Uh, my Kindle income used to be much higher, but once again, more people started adding more books and everything. And I didn't really rank them or I didn't drive traffic to them. So the sales fell off. But if you do it with a plan and you learn how to, you know, I mean, it's, this is the thing. Have a blog, have your Kindle book on your blog with an affiliate link. You can get an Amazon affiliate link to your own products and they buy your book. You get that money and you get some affiliate. Um, uh, what was it? Spiff. You get a little, you get like you're tipping yourself. So you can do that. This is funny. I like this. If you want the throne, you have to get out of your chair and do the work. I mean, that's typical what a lot of people are looking for. Cause like I said, you know, it's just, uh, that's what the whole title business tips for the, for the thirsty hustler. You got to stop being thirsty and, you know, start filling up those cups. And that's going to take execution. Michael Sneed, crazy. No, several life coaches who lives are a complete mess. Uh, that's the impotence for a lot of uh, life coaches. Uh, their lives are crazy. Their lives are, they've overcome certain uh, drama. They've uh, overcome illness and they, they've really been there and they can talk to people on an authentic level. Except I just think the life coaching is lucrative. There's people I know of because life coaching and then there's spirituality, and then there's, um, I forget the other thing. But to me, they're kind of closely related. So you, you have all of those things going on. I mean, the life coaching thing is, uh, I've talked about four people out of it. Life coaching is... It's, I mean, you can make great money at it, but it's a hard way to make money. It's really a hard way to make money. Now, let's also talk about another tip, you know, business tips for thirsty hustlers. Uh, kind of alluding to me putting up a lot of streams. There are some people who have seemed to have some kind of a allergic reaction to work. Now, one of the things is... I changed my business model and everything changes. Amazon.com is going to have a huge competitor, maybe with Walmart or some other company. It's coming. So if you're not working, it's going to come quicker. That's one of the things, like I said, I, I get a lot of people who, are, who want to kind of do this stuff, who want to work from home, but they don't really want to put in the work because I've had a really interesting life was homeless, went through some bullshit, started a business, didn't work out, started another one, didn't work out, started one that worked out real well, uh, got in the esoteric. I mean, this was activity. This was activity. Who in your family do you like to hear the stories? That rogue uncle, that crazy aunt that went out around the world and you know, ran off with the sailor. These are the people you want to talk to at the Christmas party. These are the people at Thanksgiving. You're like, ah, please, I hope she get drunk and start telling stories. Because they're fucking interesting. It's hard to sell boring. It really is. Um, Brotherhood Williams, what do you deem a false narrative? That's a really good question. You must go to college to be successful. False narrative. Uh, you must have an MBA to start a business. False narrative. You must be nice to women to get pussy. False narrative. <laughs> this was, it's like uh, America's based on fairness. False narrative. America is uh, the land of opportunity. The land, no, and it's not a false narrative. There's opportunity, but it's strategy, it's connections, and hard work. 
if you're unconnected, you can work your ass off for your whole life and not really make a lot of money. If you're very connected and you do hard work, a la Donald Trump, you can become a billionaire. Like I said, I'm not going to marginalize the man because, you know, I think, you know, he's done some uh, demonstrable things, but he works. He puts in the work. You can't take that away from him. So those are false narratives. Um, Broderick, life did change for me when I got out of survival mode. I demanded more money. Now there's extra money to invest in courses and play and experiment more. Damn right. <laughs> Pauline, hey, I am the crazy one. I did run off of the seller. Um, yeah, the false narratives keep people broke. Uh, false narrative that I fell into for a few years. Uh, I'm not going to do anything on Saturdays because everybody's watching football. That's a false narrative. People are spending a bunch of money on Saturday. Uh, false narrative. Uh, if I do live streams in the morning, I won't get as many if I do at night. So how do you get out of the false narratives? You challenge the false narratives. You're like, okay, well, I believe this, but I don't know this to be true because I haven't done it. So you actually put this into play. I'm doing this, all this stuff for a bigger reason. <laughs> uh, Charlton, America is the land of equal opportunity. That is a false narrative. The biggest beneficiary of affirmative action were white women. They, in the 60s, put women as a minority, even though at the time women had a greater population, was the largest population of all American populations. Right now, white women are the largest population demographic in America. And that's a minority. <laughs> I'm just like, you once you start to learn the game, it kind of blows your mind. Uh, Matthew Campbell, how do you get more connections? Hey, my name is Matthew. You got you to gotta go out there and politic. You have to attend events. Um, you have to you, get, you know, publish. You have to let people know what you do. You just have to be out there, just out there. You have to be on the track as often as you can. Uh, Purpose Pit, how do you restore your online reputation like Julian Blanc? Time Magazine coined him as possibly the most hated man in America. Homeboy still makes money. You know people who are hated make a lot of money. Sometimes people who are hated make more money than people who are loved. Who? Uh, most of America hates Trump. Um, Google Michelle Mankin. She's an Asian conservative writer, blogger. Uh, she started making seven figures years ago. This woman was hated. Um, makes bank. Hate does not equal less money. Sometimes hate equals the most money you've ever made in your life. It just depends on how you can spend the attention. Being hated isn't a bad thing. There's a reason you're being hated, and that reason can make you money. Uh, Klein, and my grandma was dead in Africa after her husband died. She sold soda, brew, natural beer, and loaned money and charged interest. She put six kids through school doing this. Uh, JC, Glenda, you think being homeless made you go out and hustle even more? No. I was in that situation for a few years. I did not make the move to hustle until I got laid off for the third time. It was just like something fucking snapped in me. I was like, you gotta be kidding. I was the fucking salesman of the month. I was making money. I was making them money. And they said, hey, bye. We don't need you. I just some snap. I said, okay, I ain't going through this shit again. That was the moment. It wasn't homeless. I was homeless for, you know, boarding house, that bullshit for a minute. That wasn't it. It was not controlling my own destiny, even when I was doing a damn good job. It fucked with me. It really did. Uh, the Donster became better connected through the work with other people. The Donster, that's funny. Uh, Miss Stack, M Stack 85. People hate Mayweather, but love Pacquiao. Hate does not equal less money. Hate often means more money sometimes. Uh, Benjamin Gandhi, Martin Strickelli, people hate him, just a billionaire. Uh, Lamo, not cool. Josh Spar, how to consistently give away good content without compromising your information product. Create a larger knowledge base year after year. You cannot rely on your present knowledge base to make money in the future. You always have to be pushing the envelope 
and adding to your expertise. That's how you beat that. Sure thing, JC. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do content marketing now, 2016, 2017, you have to have the ability to give away shit that works as well as stuff that's better that works better. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. So I'm gonna put that in there. For those of you who wanna have scripted days, Go ahead and check that out. That's the end stream special. Makes a big difference on how you plan stuff. Uh, I, I, I'll probably do a webinar where I share this because I'm not sharing it on YouTube. I, I'm just, that just, I, something intuitively tells me that that would just be very, very bad. <laughs> very, very bad. But, you know, this is the thing with uh, thirsty hustlers. People are... How do I put it? It's like you hope that this five minute solution is going to fix your 30 years of pain when it really won't. It's probably going to take two or three years of applied effort to fix the 30 years of damage or something like that. Are you ever concerned about running out of topics to talk about? I know you saw many YouTube resellers. I'm not a reseller. That's one reason I don't run out of stuff. And business changes. Mm -mm, not worried about it at all. Shit, 18 things happened today that I could have talked about today. I just didn't choose to. Nah, I ain't worried about it. See, this is the thing about starting 12 businesses, even the ones that were fucked up and didn't make me money. I learned from each one, and I can do this. Um, part of this is I'm, I'm probably going to do a show. I don't know if I'm going to do it on this channel or another one, but... If you're going to do some like five days a week, you got to have a plan. You got to have a not. And I'm just testing this out. No, I, I have about 600 storage auction stories I could still tell that I've never told. I just stopped because I was like, I'm not a reseller. I'm not selling on eBay. I'm not selling on Amazon. I mean, I, you know, I, I can't be the Al Bundy of the reseller community. You know, back in the 85, I bought this shoe and it was so beautiful. It was, it was so beautiful. No. <laughs> I real smile. I realize my limitations. Oh uh, no, if I do that webinar, it's gonna be paid. It's probably gonna be a part of uh, Uncivilized Profits. And I know someone's gonna ask me for that. So hold on a second, let me find it. And I will send you links to that. Because there will not be any streams tomorrow. There will be no streams on this Friday. Let's see. Oh, because I got to do coursework, and that's going to be all day Friday and probably on the weekend. So it will be no streams for Friday. And that's another reason I've been doing, you know, two, because my goal is five a week. So <laughs> I'm, like, killing my numbers here. That's, that's the goal. I want to do five a week, preferably in the morning. But... All right, so let's see. Put this link in there. Pretty interesting. This internet I have. Some you know, I think it's YouTube. Uh, I know it's YouTube. All right, so that's uncivilized profits for those who want that. Roderick, you have to be nice to women to get pussy. Huge false narratives. You know how many men fall into that narrative? Well, the romance dating pickup artist niche is huge because a lot of guys have fallen into that false narrative. So it's a big, big, big stuff. Big, big false narrative. Um, another false narrative is, and this this kind of goes with um, the thirsty hustler, hustler porn thing. You have to be a millionaire or a billionaire to teach somebody how to make money. Now, some people that I learned how to make money from weren't rich. Um, years ago, I, I've talked about this when I was at Fort Mac, uh, one of the retirees, I forget how he, I think he got hurt of something because he retired and he was a school teacher. Okay, no, no, how did I? Um, oh, Alfonso's dad. Because I was like, wait a minute, how did I meet this dude? Well, he and his wife 
school teachers, um, maybe $20,000 a year at the height of their career. They own 10 properties outright. What they do? Took her salary or his salary and they bought property. Every year they bought a property somewhere with that money. Say the whole thing, bought a property. That's it. And then they got retired and had their pension and they live like ballers. I mean, I don't even know if they were millionaires. They had 10 properties. This is when houses, you know, were like 50, 60, 70, 80,000. Maybe, maybe they were, I don't even think they were millionaires on paper, but you got a pension check coming in. She got a pension check coming in and you got 10 rental checks coming in and your house and everything's paid for. Even let's say, let's say rent was like, this is in the 80s. Rent's like five, six hundred bucks a month. They had, so six G's. Six, G, six G's rental income is nice today. Imagine what it was in the 80s. He drove a brand new Volvo. She had a Mercedes. They weren't millionaires. I learned so much talking to him. He made, and that's where I come with. If you don't, you know, if you don't manage your money, your money's gonna manage you. But you know, many people feel like uh, somebody was telling me about someone. And she had scooped him out and was like, this guy was a con artist and all this other stuff. It was amazing. It was funny. Uh, would you suggest, um, Chris W., would you suggest share the dedicated web hosting with starting an online service business? Share it. It doesn't really matter until you get traffic. Share it. Um, the thing with the Uber cars, that's going to take a while to implement because, see, the driverless car thing is coming, but there's a big federal hurdle that they got to jump over. I, I'm thinking we're 10 years away from that. Even though we have the technology today, I think we're from that because they're going to have to go to Congress because to put these driverless cars on the road legally, other than research, they have to get permission. So... There's a lot of work to be done before there's like, you know, 20, you know, you're, you're on the highway and every other car is an automated driving car. No, no, that's no, no. You can start Uber today and probably work for 10 years if you wanted to. Um, definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's it's overblown fears. And I mean, this is something that I've noticed online. People will complain about something that can potentially happen or. In some cases, they would complain about something that can't happen. Years ago, there was this guy, he was on Jeopardy, he had this huge afro, right? And he had wrote down the wrong answer, and then he got slick that, but I still, you know, just won Jeopardy. And they went off and was like, what if he had gotten the wrong answer? He would have been so embarrassed. But he would, wait a minute, he won. You can't unwin, he won. But they, they turned the fact that he could have possibly won into this big, huge brouhaha. People do that shit. I have a theory, but I'm not going to say it. And I heard Dane Dash saying that, talking about athletes and music artists who get endorsements and sponsors can't teach you about how to run the business. Mm. I mean, they're not running the business. Like, uh, I know this a long time ago. All of the athletes and famous people, they always had huge followings on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Because they were famous. Like, The Rock has like 30-some million social media followers. That's an incredibly huge audience. That's billionaire-making audience. 30 million people follow The Rock. 30 million. I mean, just to give you perspective, because, you know, I don't really get deep into what he's doing, but if he put out, let me pull out the calculator, if he put out a $25 product, right, Come on, open up, open Sesame. And he's got, let's do this, 30 million minus 99.5%. So it's like hmm, 150,000 people, right? Times 25 is 3.7 million. He bought a $25 product and he sold that every week times 52, shit, $195 million. 
So his audience is massive. Rock. So you're asking for war. I mean, seriously, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of fights in Congress. The lobbyists are gonna weigh in. The uh, American Teamster, the truck driving, the the you the, the, the Teamster people who drive trucks will be impacted first before cars, because uh, here's the math on the truck. You get an automated attendant to drive the truck. The truck can do 55 miles per hour. To, and if you know anything about diesels, diesels don't have to turn off. So that, that truck can turn and burn. It's not uh, the automated attendant will not be subject to the time in the seat that, you know, human drivers are. So they can lower fuel cost, double the time of the truck on the road, save money on fuel, make more trips and not pay workers comp pensions for one oh hell yeah that's coming cj wealth the super wealthy give advice that's above most people's execution capabilities i agree 100 percent. most people don't know how to make their daily operations to a system that can be duplicated i agree 100 percent. which is kind of one of the reasons that these streams and this channel, this is uh, the beginner stuff. Uh, the new products and things that are coming out, it's going to be just much higher, much higher level stuff. Yep, trucks will be first, definitely. Let's see, where are we with this? Okay. All right, so let's see. I'm going to put this in there. That is that one for those who want to do uncivilized profits. And for you folks who want, let's see, get this in here. This is scripture days for those who are bold enough and rugged enough to go deep. <laughs> so you want those. Uh, typically, streams play for like 30 minutes after I bounce. So you still got a minute to get in there and get that. No more creative driver logs. A lot of stuff's going to go. It's going to be some big, massive changes. And if you're not ready or you're building your own business or positioning yourself, you're going to be ran over. Uh, I think a lot of people who aren't prepared, regardless of who would have gotten in office, I mean, much of the shit was still going to happen. I just think uh, it's kind of like 9-11 produced the recession much faster. It was going to happen anyway. 9-11 just made it come just quicker. So that's what I think we're going to deal with. All right. So for those of you who like this, be sure to comment, subscribe, like, and share. And I am out. Oh, yeah. Thanks for everybody that came out today.